Well, hey, what's going on? Nick Kirby here. Welcome to a special edition of Chatterbox Reds presented by DSC Commodities. Coming up in just a minute, myself and Craig Sandlin, we talked with Jacob Herdebees, player just added to the Reds 40-man roster, has a really cool story uh, coming from Army, where he went to college, uh, being an undrafted uh, signing of the Reds and uh, making it all the way up to AAA and having a ton of success last season. Uh, really looking forward to everyone getting to hear about Jacob Herdebees, and I have a feeling by the time you get to the end of this interview, you will become a big fan of his. Uh, before we get to that, want to make sure we shout out our sponsor, DSC Commodities. Uh, Deep South Commodities is a leader in renewable commodities for biofuel production. They specialize in used cooking oil collection, aggregation, and sales. Uh, visit www deepsouthcommodities.com for more information. Uh, thanks so much to John and everyone at DSC Commodities uh, for making everything we do here at Chatterbox Reds possible. Uh, quick housekeeping before we get to this interview. Uh, we will be looking to do probably a live show next uh, Monday night. Uh, I've got a couple guys that I want to bring on and do like a panel type show. I'll go through some of the Red Zips predictions and do some over-under. Uh, so look for that probably on Monday night. And then Tuesday morning in your uh, podcast feed, of course, uh, at Nicholas P. Kirby on Twitter. I'll keep you updated whenever we do uh, live shows. Of course, subscribe to Chatterbox Sports on YouTube. Hit that bell in the top right corner and turn on notifications so you are always notified. All right. Without further ado, here is our interview with Jacob Herdebees. All right. We are joined now by Jacob Herdebees, newest addition to the Reds uh, 40-man roster this offseason. Jacob, how are you doing? Uh, how exciting was it to get uh, added to the 40 man just a few weeks ago? You know, this this whole year has kind of been a, a surreal experience. Um, and getting added to the 40 man was just kind of the cherry on top of everything that happened for me this year. Um, you know, kind of the story for me is going into this season, I, I didn't know what my expectations were. Um, the 22 season uh, was kind of plagued by injuries. Um, plagued by a lack of playing time. Um, and I just didn't know, you know, sort of what my future was going to be in professional baseball. Um, and to have the season end the way that it did, uh, being a, invited to the Arizona Fall League, winning a championship there. Um, and then obviously right after the Fall League ended, I, I got the call to be on the 40-man. Um, you know, things just kind of clicked for me. And, um you know, it, it was just an awesome season. What did that process look like for you getting called up uh, to the 40 man? Did you get a call from your agent? Did you get a call from the Reds directly? Kind of talk us through that communication for those of us that aren't familiar. I ended up getting a couple of phone calls. Um, I got a phone call from uh, Sean Pender, who is Reds farm director, I believe. Um, and then uh, from at the time, GM Nick Crawl. Um, both of those guys gave me a call just, uh, wanting to congratulate me. I think Nick crawl gave me the phone call first. Um, and just congratulating me, telling me that, you know, I really earned this opportunity and, um, that they're excited to, to have me as a part of the 40 man, um, and see what I can do. Um, hopefully this upcoming year to contribute to a couple of, uh, reds wins. <laughs> So Jacob, uh, take us back a little bit because you have one of the the cooler stories uh, of anyone who's on on the cusp of of uh, maybe making a major league debut soon. So you played at Army. What was that like uh, playing baseball while also uh, you know dealing with the the uh, duties of being in a military school? Yeah, um, going to West Point was one of the greatest privileges that I've had. Um, Kind of, kind of similar story. I had no intentions of being in the military uh, coming out of high school. Um, I had nobody in my family who had served uh, West Point, Naval Academy, Air Force. They were all kind of off my radar. I didn't, I didn't really, or I wasn't searching for an opportunity like that. Um, and then I get a phone call from the West Point head coach at the time, and. Um, you know, he, he kind of just gave me the invitation of coming to the academy, wanting to check it out. Um, and, you know, going through high school, never thought I would be at an academy, like I said. 
Um, and once I got to West Point, uh, I absolutely loved it. I loved the structure of it. I loved um, the rigor, the challenge. Um, and what I really think has helped me throughout my professional career so far is the discipline and um, just the challenging times that I had while I was at West Point um, and what it takes to be a, uh, a cadet and a student there. Um, you know, I learned perseverance. I learned ha uh, hard work, uh, work ethic, um, time management, so many different things that now I'm able to carry forward into my professional career um, with the with the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah, that's awesome. And and obviously there was a recent change that allowed you to pursue professional sports that previously you may not have. Um, but after baseball is done for you there will be a five-year commitment to service. Can you talk about your role with the Army after baseball, at least as much as you're able to, second lieutenant in air defense? Uh, what does that mean? What kind of role do you take with the Army after baseball? The, the cool thing about the position that I'm in is I'm, I'm sort of trailblazing the path for um, people from the academies coming after me. Um, I'm the first professional baseball player under this new policy that was implemented by President Trump back in 2019. Um, I graduated in 2020. Um, and I don't necessarily know what my time in the Army is going to look like. Um, I know that I have some form of service, um, whether that's in air defense, whether that's helping in some other uh, federal capacity. Um, I'm, I'm completely unsure. Um, I, I have no one to look, you know, nobody to look ahead to, uh, to see what's going to happen. Um, there are a couple of other athletes in different sports. We, I think we have three or four football players, um, playing in the NFL right now. So kind of just depends on who finishes their career first for us to be able to see, uh, what that really is going to look like. Um, all I can say is that I know that whenever the time comes, I'm, I'm going to, um, be excited to serve and, um, you know, do it with all my heart. So you're coming off a incredible season, uh, at Chattanooga, you had a, uh, 453 on base percentage. You get called up to Louisville and you have an unbelievable 537 on base percentage. What, what do you do that allows you to be so elite, like put up video game numbers, um, at getting on base <laughs> well for one i think that the the strike zone the automated strike zone in triple a really helped me um i i didn't realize how small my strike zone was going to be uh up in triple a with the with that automated strike zone um so that definitely helped uh <laughs> there were a couple times where um there would be called balls where i i thought it was going to be a strike um but just kind of working with that new system, I was able to learn and adapt to what my strike zone was um, up there with ABS. And, um, you know, I think I've always just had a, a really good eye at the plate. I, I know what pitches I can do damage with. Um, and I have a pretty good knack at swinging at the pitches that I want to swing at. And if, if it's not a pitch that I think I can do damage with, um, usually, you know, <laughs> Baseball is not not always the easiest where I can control which pitches I'm gonna actually swing at, but um, usually I'm able to to pick out the good ones and um, put a good swing on the baseball. And that's been kind of your approach for a while now. I read in an article that one of the reasons that you chose to sign with the Reds was that their motto was "Do damage or take the walk," right? Mm -hmm. And so, how far back does that approach for you go? Um, you know, growing up in Indiana, were there people that you looked up to, uh, professionally that took that same, uh, approach at the plate that you modeled yourself after, or where does that come from? Uh, kind of comes from my lack of power. <laughs> um, you know, if I'm, if I'm not getting on base, I am, I'm not doing my, my job. Um, and so, you know, growing up, um, I've always had to get on base to do the most damage uh, as a player. Um, that's why I get hit by a lot of pitches. That's why I take a lot of walks is because 
you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily going to be getting, you know, 50 doubles in a season. Um, but if I can increase my singles, quote unquote, by getting a walk or getting hit by a pitch and getting on base, um, I'm able to use my speed in a way where it, it looks like I'm hitting doubles and hitting triples because I'm able to steal bases. Um, so for me, the value of getting on base is much higher than um, somebody that that hits home runs. Um, you know, and I, I think the cool part about baseball is that you need a good balance of guys who can get on base um, and guys that can can slug. Um, and so just having that that ability and i'm not going to call it a natural ability i've definitely had to work on my eye and um, study my own strike zone um, but being able to have that ability has definitely helped me um, re reach a new level with my game so who do you maybe model or or look up to uh for your for your game as a hitter your your swing at least to me is a very untrained baseball person kind of looks almost like someone in in the npl or the the kbo yeah. Yeah. Um, my favorite player growing up was Ichiro, um, watching him get infield singles, uh, watching his kind of unique batting style, uh, kind of more of a slap hitter type. Um, <laughs> I, I try to stay in the box as much as I can. Um, but you know, when it, when it comes to the game swing, I'm, I'm just ready to run, I guess. Um, so, you know, I'll take that swing and I'll kind of start running almost before my swings even finished. Um, it's not something that I train, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm hitting in the cage or on field BP, my swing looks a lot different than it does, um, in the game. And it's still something that I'm, I'm trying to, um, you know, trying to work on I'm I'm, I'm trying to stay in the box more because I think it's going to help, uh, my barrel control a little bit better. Um, so I'm always trying to find ways to, uh, to improve my game. So you, you mentioned the quote unquote lack of power, right? So you go your entire high school career, your entire college career, all of 2021, no homers, basically all of 2022, right? Your last at bat yeah. of 2022 is your first career home run, maybe yeah. all the way through little league for all we know. <laughs> what was, what was that like to finally get one over the fences? What emotions were going through your head? I mean, could you even contain yourself running around the bases at that point? I probably broke the the record for fastest uh, sprint around the bases on an over the fence home run. Um, I, I was running like I was about to hit a triple, um, and you know, finally it snuck over the fence. And just the coolest part of that day, what one? It was the last game of the season, so I could kind of end on a high note. Um, but just seeing the reactions from my teammates when I went back and like watched the video over and over, um, I had Ellie De La Cruz in the dugout. I had Christian Encarnacion strand. I had all these big names, um, and they were just like so happy for me and so proud. Um, and I, you know, I talked about the 2022 season that I had where it was plagued with injury and plagued with lack of playing time. Um, so, you know, maybe we can call that the ride into 2023. I, I ended 2022 on a high note. Um, and was just kind of able to carry over um, some of that power into into 2023. Well, yeah, seven home runs the in 2023. What, what do, you, do you contribute any anything to this? Uh, you know, recent improvement in power. Do you think that maybe you've tapped into something that that you can maybe even get a little bit more out of in the future? Yeah, I, I mean, at at the beginning of the season, especially, I really started. Um, to just change my mental approach and how I was going to attack the baseball. Um, and a lot of that came from working with driveline uh, over the 2022 off season. Um, I trained with weighted bats and um, a big part of their uh, training program is just like their mental approach. Like, how are you going to attack the baseball um, to do the most damage? And um, early on in the season, uh, you know, I, I had nothing to lose. So I was just going after the baseball as hard as I could, trying to swing as hard as I could. Um, and, you know, I was able to put a couple of baseballs over the fence. I've always been told, like, you're a strong guy. Like, let's let's try to tap into that, um, tap into that potential a little bit. You know, you probably have some low hanging fruit, I've been told. Um, and uh, I, I was able to get a little bit of that um, just, I think just general strength 
and um, and general speed. I, I was just able to um, to use it a little bit more, and I think it was thanks to Driveline. And then, obviously, we mentioned it before. Had a chance to play in the fall league uh, this year. Um, talk about it. That experience out in Arizona um and uh maybe anything that you were focused on working on during that experience yeah the the arizona fall league was a blast um it's one of the coolest opportunities i think in professional baseball um you know you're you're mixed up with guys from four other organizations and um just some of the best talent in the the minor leagues um it was it was a blast. I I told a lot of my teammates who were asking about it, and um, some of the Reds organization staff who was asking about it. Um, I, I told them it was probably the most fun baseball that I've played in in my life. It was just super relaxed. Um, it was super fun, and um, it was just a, a joy to be around the guys. Um, in terms of what I was trying to work on out there, um, I was just trying to, you know, keep. Um, keep my game consistent from what I was doing at the end of the year. Um, you know, if I'm, if I'm able to put up the numbers that I was putting up at the end of the year, uh, I, I don't know that there's much to change. Um, but, you know, I was trying to stay healthy. The, the weird part about playing out there is that you're not necessarily playing every, every game. Sometimes you, you know, take two off days um, during, during a week as opposed to not, or as opposed to playing every day during the, during the regular season. So um, it's a little bit different out there, uh, but it's super relaxed, super fun. Um, and anybody who has the opportunity to, to play in that league is, is very lucky. So Jacob, that's a, a pretty long season when you add the, the Arizona fall league on top of a, a, a full minor league season. Uh, was there, was that part of it difficult to, you know, handle a little bit. And I guess, do you think like playing that long of a season will help you better prepare, you know, if you're able to get called to the majors? So I, I got married on December 2nd. So mentally at, at the end of the season, my mind was, okay, now I can focus on getting married. And um, I think it was three days before the, the season ended uh, was when I got told I was going to be going to the fall league. So I kind of had to mentally switch my mind back into baseball mode. Um, you know, the last three games of the season in Louisville, it was just, um, you know, we were playing, we didn't, we weren't playing for anything. We didn't have, um, we didn't have any like playoff implications on the line. Um, so we were, we were just trying to get, get through the season and get ready for the off season. Um, but then I, I quickly had to make that switch. Um, so it, it was, it was a lot of fun. It, it is difficult um, to play that many games during the season on your body. Um, you, you can definitely feel it towards the end that your legs are getting a little tired, uh, a little heavy. Um, but, you know, it, it was great experience for me to play that many games because, you know, hopefully I'm, I'm playing that long um, and up in the big leagues in the future. So um, definitely a, a good experience. Talking about extended baseball, I mean, you had a chance during college to play in the Cape Cod League, one of the most respected summer leagues out there, um, but also one of the most fun. Any stories that you can share from Cape Cod, any players you played with that uh, you enjoyed facing or uh, relationships that you built during that experience? Yeah, I think I think the uh, person that I I'm in touch with the most is probably Joey Weimer, who is the outfielder for uh, the Milwaukee Brewers. Him and I were on the same um, same team in Harwich. Uh, I, and I actually played for two teams. I played for Harwich and I played for Orleans during the same summer. Um, but Joey Weimer is a, a good buddy of mine, and it was cool to see uh, what he was able to do this year in the big leagues. Um, I know he's a Brewers rival – or, uh, excuse me, a, a Cincinnati rival, but um, – He's a good buddy of mine and uh, look forward to hopefully playing against him in the future again. So the Reds minor league system is, is someone who's kind of followed at least casually for a while, had their best year in a long, long time as someone who played in two different levels this past season. Do you have anything that you maybe think contributed to like the overall just success of the, the Reds minor league system? I, I think that the, the, um, 
the Reds have done a fantastic job. The front office has done a f- fantastic job um, just with their draft and their player development over the last couple of years. Um, you know, when I when I came into the organization in 2020, um, we have a completely different staff than we did back then. So um, just getting to work with new coaches, um, see from different uh uh, perspectives has been a big, um, a big factor. And I, I just think that um, the Reds have a lot of confidence in their players um, and we're young. Uh, we, we have a lot of talent and I think sometimes the younger teams put, have less pressure on themselves um, just because the expectations maybe aren't as high. Um, I think that as we get more experience at the, at the next level, at the, the big league level, um, you know, once we start to get some of that playoff experience, because I, I think the Reds are definitely a team that, that are going to make it here in the next couple of years, um, you know, those expectations are going to start to lift. And um, hopefully we can just continue to play with that same, you know, that same swagger and um, play with that same young energy. And Jacob, you're obviously, uh, you know, with all due respect, a somewhat untraditional uh, prospect in terms of the baseball world, at least where a lot of times guys are, or blogs or whatever, are focusing a lot on the 18, 19, 20 year olds um, with your background, having gone to army, being a little bit older. Um, how do you take that experience and become a leader on a squad um, that is full of a lot of those 18, 19, 20 year old guys? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've I've been lucky to play on a lot of teams with a lot of great leaders. Um, you know, coming from West Point um, and just even growing through the through the minor league system, I, I had a ton of people who I looked up to. Um, and now, as I get ready to maybe jump into more of a leadership type role, um, you know, considering my age, I don't like to think that I'm too old, but. Um, I know that, like you said, in terms of prospect status, um, I, I might be considered old. Um, but I'm excited for every opportunity to lead. And um, just I, I think the, the biggest thing to remember when playing this game and when like giving advice to young players is that it's such a long season. Um, you, you have gotten to the point in your career for a reason. Um, And just learning to trust in yourself as a player and as a person. Um, I I don't think that pressing to do more um, is going to do any good, Um, but just relaxing, going out there, having fun. um, That's what this game is all about. I think that's what the fans enjoy to watch. Um, You know, they they don't like to see the guys who, you know, are are super stressed about the game, you know, that they just want to see, um, teams out there having fun and um, you know I think when uh, when you see the Reds when they when they win a win a game um, you can see kind of how that that fun loose energy um, is displayed out there on a, on the field all right so it's definitely a mistake that we've gone over 20 minutes and I haven't asked you about your speed which is such a a big part of your game uh, 100 career stolen bases and just over a thousand plate appearances. What do you just contribute your your ability to steal bases? Has some of the rule changes, uh, like the bigger bases, the uh, uh, pickoff limit, that kind of stuff, really um, helped you? And and the Reds seem like it's such an emphasis in the organization as all, well, just uh, even leading up to the major leagues at this point. Having speed in general helps steal bases, um, and then with the addition of the recent rule changes, um, that that helps even more. Uh, knowing that the pitcher has a limited number of attempts to come over, um, you can start to anticipate a little bit better um, whether or not the the pitcher is going to break for home or whether or not he's going to pick off. Um, And, you know, once he uses one of them, sometimes you you can tell the pitchers that are kind of aggressive early and want to use all their picks um, early in the count. And then you you know the guys that have the tendency to um, not, not even pick off at all. So that comes from a lot of scouting. Um, and, uh, I think just general anticipation, um, and picking up tendencies while in the dugout and while on the bases, 
uh, helps to, to steal a lot of those bases. And along the same lines, because of your speed, you mentioned it earlier, basically a walk is a, is a single, right? So, um, you know, in 2023, 101 free bases, if my math is correct, 77 walks and 24 hit by pitches. First of all, that's a lot of hit by pitches. So I hope mm. that, uh, the bruises are healing up and everything, yes. but, um, you know, you mentioned the ABS, which quite frankly, I think sooner or later may make its way to the major leagues anyway. Um, talk about just free bases in general and, and how those play into your game. You mentioned not having the power. So maybe those free bases are, you know, an easy way to get on base and create havoc, you know, walks hit by pitches. Uh, I even get the occasional catcher's interference. Um, though, those are all ways for me to do my job, you know, either as a leadoff hitter or as a nine hole hitter, I think that's kind of where my game plays the best. Um, you know, if I'm able to be a table setter and um, give guys opportunities behind me to drive in runs to to have those RBI opportunities, um, that that's just going to be where I help the team the most. Um, you know, I, I my RBI numbers aren't super high, but my runs scored are. Um, and you, like I said earlier, you have to have both um, on a team. You can't just have guys that hit RBIs because if, if you don't have guys that are scoring runs, you don't have the, the guys that are getting those RBI. So it kind of plays hand in hand and, um, you know, getting walk or getting walked or getting hit by a pitch are, are just two of the ways that I can um, try to help the team win. Does It doesn't always have to be pretty. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, to that point um, in 2023, you scored 102 runs on 214 on base appearances essentially so if you get on base you're scoring essentially half the time um mm -hmm. basically through stolen bases and the guys behind you so um an incredible tool that you have yeah um i i try to use it as much to the to my advantage as i can and um it's just one of the ways to help the team win let's talk about defense a little bit uh so so far in your minor league career you played more in the the corners left and right field, um, the, but a little bit of center. And I know in college you played almost exclusively at center field. Uh, do you have a position you feel more comfortable at in the outfield or you just wherever they'll stick me, I'll play and, and try to make plays defensively and use my speed? Yeah, that, that last part is exactly it. Wherever I can um, play and play on the field uh, is where I want to be. Um, I had a little bit of difficulty adjusting to left and right um, immediately after getting uh, signed. Um, but now I feel just as comfortable, if not more comfortable in the, on the corners uh, as I do in center. Um, you know, playing outfield, I think, is a ton of fun. And so as long as I'm out there, I'm, I'm going to enjoy it. And Nick Crawl and, and David Bella both talked about the value of flexibility uh, with a player. I, I, you know, we touched on being added to the 40 man earlier, but, um, what are your expectations for 2024? Um, can we expect to see you on the big league in the big leagues at some point? Do you think what communication, if any of has happened in regards to the plans for this year? Yeah. I mean, there, there's not really been much communication from anybody higher up. Um, you know, the expectation is just to go into spring training and I'm obviously going to be competing for a spot, um, just in this game, you never know what's going to happen with injuries, um, with how players are going to end up performing. Um, so the only thing that I can do is go in there and just focus on being the best version of me. Um, and, you know, wherever that takes takes me this year um, is, is where it's going to end up. So um, obviously looking forward to going into my first big league spring training, um, being around those guys, getting to learn a little bit more about some of them and, um, also just catching up with some of the guys that I've played with in the past. So Jacob, I want to ask you about uh, TJ Friedel. Um, he's kind of a guy that just came through the reservation a little bit ahead of you. Uh, that wasn't a super high prospect, but is burst onto the major league scene last year was a four win player. If you, you like wins above replacement really proved a lot of the, the doubters wrong that does a player like him kind of, maybe give you a little extra confidence that 
that, yeah, I can kind of follow that, that same type of mold. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, he, he's one of those players who, um, he, he's got a kind of a similar setup to me, uh, or I have a similar setup to him. He, I think he's a little bit older than me, so I'll, I'll say I copied him, but, um, somebody that, um, has a similar batting stance, um, with just like a, an open stance, um, trying to keep our eyes on the baseball as long as possible. Um, but he's definitely somebody that, uh, from afar so far, I've been able to kind of look up to and, um, model my game after, and also just see that, you know, there, there is hope for a, a player like me. Um, we're, we're definitely different in, in some ways. Um, but I'm excited to go into spring training and learn a lot from him. Um, just as a, as a player, as a defender, um, as a bunter, he's, he's got a really good bunt tool. Um, so I, I'm just excited to be around, um, guys like that, uh, who are excited, who are hungry and, um, just want to compete to win. I mean, bunting is a big part of your arsenal as well. Um, I, I saw in an article, um, I think it was actually a, an opposing coach that now works for the Reds, uh, who mentioned your bunting ability, uh, even in college. So how much are you working on that? How do you, how much pride do you take in your ability? Again, it goes to getting on base, which we've talked about at length, but, um, since you brought it up, kind of talk about bunting and where it fits into your game. Yeah. It, it's just another one of those tools to have in the toolkit. Um, you know, when you're up at the up at the plate, you're trying to find the best way to get on base. Um, sometimes bunting isn't always the best option, um, given a situation. Uh, sometimes the game calls for you to uh, take a swing, try to drive a runner in. Um, but other times, um, you know, especially with power or lack of power, um, you have to be able to get runners over. You have to play small ball. Um, and that that's just been a part of my game for as long as I can remember. So um, I definitely take great pride in it. Um, I think it's, you know, it, it's a situational thing where, um, you know, maybe there's an opportunity to get into a game or to get called up um, for a situation where uh, a, a bunt needs to be put down. Um, and so you just always have to be ready for those opportunities. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm obviously working on it still in the off season and hopefully can showcase those those tools in a game this year. I, I'm, op, I'm an optimistic guy. I think by the end of 2024, we're not going to be talking about this lack of power. I think you got a little bit more that you're going you're gonna to <laughs> tap it. into this year. <laughs> I appreciate uh, it. <laughs> so I want to ask you, uh, you played at three different levels with the Reds, uh, Dayton, Chattanooga, and Louisville. Uh, any, any of those levels kind of stand out to you? Any you know, coaches that have really made a big impact on you kind of as you've kind of gone through the Reds minor league system? Yeah, I, uh, you know, I've gotten to play for uh, Jose Moreno my first three years um, with the Reds. 2021, he was in Dayton. 2022, he was the manager of Chattanooga. And then again, in 2023, he was also in Chattanooga. So, um, you know, I, I think it really helped to have played for the same manager for three straight seasons. Um, just knowing what his expectations were going to be um, for you as a player, for you as a person, as a teammate. Um, so, you know, I, I've had a lot of different people who have made an impact on me um, in some form or another, pretty much every coach um, has just been a joy to be around. Um, to work with. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I can't wait to hopefully meet, meet more people and, um, just learn from, uh, those guys as I continue to climb, uh, climb the ladder. Jacob, you mentioned getting married, uh, this December, uh, I saw on social media and otherwise that faith plays a big part in your relationship with your wife and, and her future. Um, kind of talk about how faith plays into, uh, your role as an athlete and, and in your life overall. Faith is a big part of so many different aspects of um, of my life. It, it plays a role in uh, my marriage. It plays a role in um, my game. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not where I am today without um, Jesus Christ, who 
as uh, my Lord and Savior. I've, I've been watching a lot of uh, <laughs> CJ Strout videos recently and uh, how he does that at the end of every interview um, or maybe at the beginning of every interview. So um, it's pretty cool to look up to somebody like him. Um, but, you know, th this game can be so hard um, on us mentally. Um, you know, sometimes we see the, the distractions and the posts um, that come from social media and it's not a rip on anybody, but, um, to have something to fall back onto, um, meaning my faith, uh, you know, it, it's truly what I place my identity in. Um, so no matter where this game takes me, um, you know, I, I know that I'm a child of the King and, um, I, I just look forward to hopefully shining uh, a light for him and, um, reflecting his glory, no matter where. Um, where I'm playing, whether it's in Triple A or Double A or um, or the the big leagues, I, I just hope that I'm able to do it with a smile on my face. And um, when people look at me and um, you know ask, even in the midst of struggles, why why is he still smiling? Um, I hope people can understand and realize that um, there's a joy found that's deeper uh, than just playing to love the game. Um, and that, that joy is found, um, from within and found from, from Christ. All right, Jacob, I got two more, maybe fun, funnish questions for you here to okay. wrap this up. All right. Let's I got to ask you, I, I heard a rumor that you grew up a Cubs fan. Is that true? Yeah, <laughs> that's correct. Um, I kind of quit, uh, being a, a fan of a lot of teams uh, after the Cubs won the World Series, so that that happened that happened my freshman year of college, and um, kind of after that, it, it was like, all right, I'm gonna end on a high. I'm gonna let it go. Um, so I I just enjoy sports in general and um, watching good games. Um, I don't necessarily am rooting for a certain team. Um, but you know, ever since I've been in the Reds organization, I've been a big Reds fan. <laughs> All right. And I got to ask you the cliche question. You played with the, the man, the myth, the legend, Ellie De La Cruz. Do you yep. have any Ellie De La Cruz stories for us? <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, what, one story that I, I do have is we all know how, how thin Ellie is. He's, I think he's trying to work a little bit on bulking up. Um, but I, I one time was with Ellie on a, a road trip home um, and I saw this man grab six honey buns from a convenience store and he put those six honey buns down on the bus uh, on the way home. So um, <laughs> hopefully he's uh, he's doing well. I know uh, I've kept in touch with him a little bit during the off season, um, but that, that's, that'll always be a story uh, that I'll remember and um it's crazy that he runs as fast as he does with all those honey buns running through him. That's great. Maybe maybe he's got some more he's gonna tap into if he uh, <laughs> cuts down to cuts down to three at a stop. <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Jacob, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, we do a post game show after every Reds game, and your name was constantly brought up in our chat as who's this Jacob Erdeby guy that, that has this ridiculous on base percentage. You've kind of become a, a fan favorite kind of just um, from people who, who like fall in the Reds minor league system and uh, can't wait to watch you in spring training. We're rooting for you this season. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on guys. If you like today's video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to Chatterbox Sports here on YouTube for great sports content all season long. We really appreciate your support. Also recommend hit that bell up in the top right corner. That'll turn on notifications so you're notified anytime we go live. And speaking of live, we have got plenty of shows for you here on Chatterbox Sports. Let's run through some of them for you. First off, we have Off the Bench, our flagship show. That is from 10 to noon, Monday through Friday, with host Tom Brenneman and a cast of characters talking all things sports with you. We also have Chatterbox Bengals. Those guys go live after every single Bengals game with instant reaction. So be sure to check that out live after every Bengals game. We have Chatterbox Clicker with Coach Kyle Kasky, former Bengals coach. That's typically on Tuesday nights. Coach Kasky breaks down film uh, with a show that you can't see anything anywhere else like. We have Mac and JT Wednesday nights. 
The guys cover all things NFL. We have our newest show, Chatterbox Bearcats. That's with host Charlie Walter. Covers all things UC sports. They go live on YouTube after every UC basketball game. And then they also have the podcast called The Chatter. Charlie Walter and Houdini uh, talking all things sports in a, a fun and more comedic style way. And then, of course, you also have a show I'm a part of, Chatterbox Reds. Currently during the offseason, we typically do a show about once a week. Also get some more content for you. But, of course, once the season starts, we'll have podcasts after every single spring training game up for in the morning and then live shows on YouTube after all 162 games and podcasts always available the next morning. And lastly, be sure to check out the Chatterbox shop. That is on chatterboxsports.com. All kinds of apparel for everyone. You won't want to miss that.